Hello again, lovely people. We are going to do a software review today. Um, somebody asked me about the novoservos.h file to explain that in detail, so I'm going to do that. It's essentially a configuration file for the motors. And then I'm going to review the motor class, which uses most of these configuration variables. Okay, so yeah, let's get right into it. Let me zoom in on this a bit for you guys. Okay. So we're going to run down all of the variables in this file. There aren't really that many. The first two, Nova, uh, total servos and total legs, is self-explanatory. And then you'll see those used throughout the code when it comes to referencing how many servos or legs there are or to iterate through either all of the servos or all four legs. So that's what those two are used for. Okay, then we assign names to our ID. I guess you could call this the array ID because the servos, servo parameters are held in arrays, which you'll see down below. So rather than referring to each motor at by one, two, three, and having to remember which is which, etc., it's much easier to define um, obvious names to those numbers. Okay. Um, the convention I used here is left or right, front or rear, and then which of the three servos for that leg, be it coax, femur, or tibia. Okay, so this one here you can see is the right front coax, then left front coax, then right rear coax, etc. Okay, that just makes things easier to reference. <clears throat> and then same thing for the legs, I'm assigning a name to each of the four legs, and same convention minus the third character, which is the servo number, obviously. So this is right front, left front, right rear, left rear. Okay. Now you'll see here where we start to use um, some of those variables, at least the total servos and total legs, with regard to setting up the arrays. Now these arrays all just basically hold data. Some of them are used for movement. Um, actually, majority of these are moved for movement. Then these down here are pretty much static data, which yes, I should probably throw constant on these variables to make them more memory friendly, but yeah, my code obviously needs a lot of cleanup, and that's one of the things. Okay, anyway, I digress. So this first one, each of these is an array, and we set up the array with the number of total servos, okay? In most cases, I'll explain these off ones when we get to them. So the first one is active sweep. So whenever you're going to move a motor, you'll set this to one for that motor, and then the class knows, okay, this motor is supposed to be moving. Okay, and I say here, it tracks active sweeping servos. You know what? My mistake, let me roll that back a little bit. I moved these variables around because they were kind of all just in a list, but there is three distinct groupings of them. So let me back up. This is active sweep, which these first three refer to. I do have a sweeping class, which will, which will basically take a motor through, you know, forward and then backwards. And then you could set as many times. You could set the start and end point, and then you could set the, you know, loop of it. So that's a little different than just moving the servo. So I should probably skip this because you may not use it. You don't have to use it, but it's there if we want to. I mean, when I was developing this software, I just threw things in there as I came up with the ideas. There's also some sequencing stuff that I'll get to later that, again, you may have no need for or may want to come up with your own way of sequencing and moving the servos. But anyhow, that being said, Let's start over with this block of, of, of variables here. So the first one is active sweep. So that tells the, the software, is this servo active, should be actively sweeping. Okay, and then servo sweep now is, is a multidimensional array where each servo has all of these parameters for it if you want to do a sweep. And real quick, those are the start position, the target position, which aka end position. Sweep type means just go one way or go back and forth, back and forth. And then how many times to do that movement. And then if there should be a delay before each sweep. Okay, and then I had an idea for another one of the parameters, but I decided not to use it. So I just left it there defined in case I need to use it. Okay, and, that, and we'll see that in the code later. And then servo switch just tracks if the servo is going in which direction. It's basically a one or a zero. It's going from start to target or target to back to start. Okay, so those are those three arrays. Now these are the more important ones. 
So active servo, this is the first one that I thought I was explaining. Uh, this tracks, yes, just if you want to move a servo, you set that to one and then you set its parameters and then the class will see that active servo is one and it will move that servo. When it's done moving it, it resets that back to zero. Servo speed, you can set the speed for each of the servos, which again, the class will reference and use in its iterations, its stepping of the servo. The servo position will track the current position of the servo at all times. So every time it gets incrementally moved, the servo position variable will update. Um, I'm not sure I use that much throughout the code, but it is good to, for, for double checking at least to see if it's reached its target or if it's still at its start position, etc. Okay, then we have a target position. So when you want to move a servo, you'll set its target position and you'll set active. Those are the two things you have to set. Everything else is, is variable. So once it has a target position and active, the class will pick that up and execute the move. Servo step basically just tracks each iteration through its stepping to get to that target, just in case, and, and that kind of applies to the sequencing. So for example, if you wanted to move like, like two legs in a walking pattern, what this is used for is for me to check that leg A is done with its stepping or halfway through, and then I can fire off the other one kind of thing. So it gives you a lot of control on when to fire other servos. servos. And pardon me, I quite often say servers when I'm saying servos, and that's because I've been a web developer for 25 years. So that word server, server is part of my daily language, basically. Okay, just a side note, sorry about that. Okay, and then servo, servo ramp, see that I almost did it again. Servo ramp refers to a, a configuration settings, another multi-dimensional array where each servo has its own parameters. And that's kind of, populated on the fly if you that's a function that i wrote to ramp the servos up and what that means for those of you who may not know is okay so linear travel when you tell a servo to move is at one speed okay ramping gives you some cushion on either end or one end whatever you decide to, to do so that it'll start off slow ramp up to the speed you want and then when it reaches approaches its end it will slow down to a ramp speed. So there's not that jolty, jerky movement of, of motors. You get a nice smooth start up, slow down kind of thing. So depending on the walking gait or the movement you're doing, you may want to set that to different things. You may not want to use it at all. By default, it's not used. You have to define that before you make a servo move, and then it'll respect that and, and use it in the move. Okay, and that again, you'll, you'll see more of in the code. So the parameters for that are the speed, which is generally the, the middle speed or the normal speed. Okay, travel distance is the total distance between start and target that you're going, and that's used for the mathematics to, to figure out the ramping. So then you have two sets of these parameters, the ramp speed, which tells it the slowest speed to start in the case of the first one, and then it'll ramp up to the normal speed. The ramp distance, which tells it, you know, it's in a percentage, so you could tell it do the first 15% of the full travel, ramp through that 15%. And then increment is how much, yeah, I might get this one wrong, but I believe that's with each step, how much to increment the ramp speed up so that it'll reach the full speed in this distance. Hope I explained that right. And then the same variables apply for the end ramp. And I split them up like that because you may want to vary the speed or the distance between the two, or you may not want to ramp up at the end and just ramp up at the beginning or vice versa. So you can obviously pass these zeros and it would ignore the first ramp and then it would send ramp for the second one if that's what you wanted. Okay, again, you'll see the more of that in code. Okay, and then we have these two variables, um, arrays, are really used for, again, a few different ways of sequencing that I came up with. Uh, and so basically it just tracks all of the sequence moves for each servo, or each leg in this case. And then I came up with a way that I could put little delays between each sequenced move as well. Um, honestly, I think these are just used in more for development and demo purposes. 
the demo that you may have all seen, my most popular video regarding this project, where I just took her through all of her walking steps and such. That's just the demo that I wrote, which basically is just scripting a call to each one of the moves that I make and then put a little delay in between them so that I was able to, you know, chain them all together and just click play and let it play. So I, I don't think anybody will use these, but it's there and I have no intention of removing it right now. So just to explain what they are, it's really, I'm not going to get into explaining how that works right now. If anybody cares, ask me and I, and I maybe will but I'll probably stumble through it because it's not the most uh, pretty setup. Okay, moving on. Now, these are the more important arrays that hold all the important variables for us that we'll be using. And again, I should set these to constants, and I, I will eventually. So this first one, servo setup. This sets up the controller board and the motor pins that each motor is connected to. Um, the reason why you have a S here is, I think I've mentioned this before, I did a hexapod project that has 21, 22 motors, and these boards only support 16. So this software can take additional controller boards. In this case, they're all board number one. The driver is going to know that. But you could set up a second board and call it number two, etc. And then it would have its own set of pins. Okay, another thing, something somebody asked me, why does it only have 15 pins? Well, it doesn't. It has 16 pins. But if you notice here, I skipped the fourth one in each fourth bank. See, it goes 0, 1, 2, there's no 3, 4, 5, 6, there's no 7. I just did that for aesthetics on the hardware itself because the board has four banks of four pins. And we have three legs for each leg. I mean, three motors for each leg. So I thought it looked nicer that way. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I mean, these don't even have to be in order. I could plug the first motor into 14 if I wanted to. It, it, this defines that. So, <clears throat> okay. And then I just simply group the servos into their respective leg here. So this array just sets up an array with four elements, three parameters per element. And then, yeah, I just group them together. Right front coax, right front femur, right front tibia, etc. And that too is just for iteration and reference, etc. Okay, now these are the two that, yes, you will play with for some time until you get your, your robot walking as best you can. And these are the coordinates, right? This I talked about extensively in my calibration videos. This first one are the home coordinates. And again, it's just, uh, and I try to maintain this order where it's right front, left front, right rear, left rear. Okay, and then it's one, two, three for each of the coax, femur, tibia. And that order as well I maintain. Coax, femur, tibia. Okay, so these are the home coordinates, uh, or PWMs, pulses, whatever you want to call them. Sorry, I don't know the technical name, but anyhow, that's what these are here. Your home positions for each servo. And then here we have the min and max position of each servo. So this is the same kind of array, but it's a multi-dimensional array where each servo has a min and a max. And just side note, I've also mentioned this in a different video. Don't get confused by the way that your left legs will be opposite the right legs. And what I mean by that is you can see this is the minimum for the left leg and the maximum for the left leg. But we're used to seeing minimums being a lower number than the maximums, right? So don't let this confuse you. Obviously, because the servos are mirrored position, this way is one way to the other. So... That, that's the whole deal with left legs having a negative number, more or less, and right legs having positive. Okay, so there's our min and max numbers. And this all came from the spreadsheet that I've shown in previous videos on calibration. So once you have gone through the calibration and are happy and comfortable with your numbers, then you come and plug them into here. And wouldn't it be great if I could just write a little script to sync that Excel sheet to this file and update it automatically? Well, if it was a web page, I could pull it off, but I'm not that good of a C programmer. Okay, moving on. These last couple ones, or this, this one here is again related to sequencing moving. I'm not even gonna get into explaining this one. It's basically pretty much just for my demo. 
So let's ignore this one now. And then the last couple are not used. They're for future kinematics that I may venture into and try again. They're basically just the lengths of the bones between each joint. So you can ignore all this right now. All right, so that's the configuration file. I think, yeah, this is 15 minutes already. Let's, I'm gonna stop this here and do a part two regarding the class. It'll probably make it easier to reference when you actually get into coding. Okay, so be sure to watch part two.